Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Tuesday, October 11th, 2022. And our top story today, parenting aging parents. Well, Kim, Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate you having having you on the program this morning. It's our pleasure. Thanks yeah, for having it's us. It's good to be here. Yeah, this is a, you know, this is a really important topic. It's an important topic to me. So many Americans. Um, and so I want to maybe start with, and I'll start with you, Kim, and then we'll go to Mike and we'll kind of ping pong back and forth. Don't feel comfortable to interject um, across each other too, that's fine. But um, you know, it used to be in our society that we took care of the aging, they live with us. And mm -hmm. uh, now we're kind of spread to the four winds, people are on the East Coast, West Coast. I live here in Charlotte, my family, my, my mom and dad are in Baltimore, my younger brother is in Boston. So we're disparate, we're, we're all over the place. Um, how has that had an impact from your perspectives on dealing with aging and dealing with aging parents? I, I would imagine it's being, it's very challenging. Oh, certainly distance makes it more difficult because I'm similar where my mom lives in Houston, about three hours away from me. My parents live in a different city as well. So I definitely think that it increases that challenge of just trying to manage, you know, where I can't just, if mom has a, a computer issue, I can't just run over real fast and fix it. Um, but I also think that even when you're in town, sometimes it can be hard because you think, oh gosh, every time mom has a little issue, do I need to run over real quick and, and take care of it? Which a lot of times you can, but, but also just trying to find how, what that rhythm is. And I think that every family has different challenges. And I think that, you know, technology gives us so many opportunities where I can FaceTime my mom. I can look at her computer. I can look at her and we can have a conversation, you know, like we're, we're together. So I think technology certainly helps that, um, that not feel so apart. But I, you know, I think that just in society in general, because transportation is easier, you know, so that we can see each other where I guess in the, you know, kind of in the old days, it wasn't that easy. So people tended to stay closer together, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, uh, we're not riding in horses and, and carriages. Right. At least yeah. most of us, most of us not, some of us are, but most of us are not Mike, uh, technology, I think we've learned a lot through the pandemic and we've implemented a lot of technological changes and even what I would consider the mature members of our society, they know how to FaceTime, they know how mm -hmm. to send email. So that really has been to, an, a, a, to their uh, betterment in terms of mm -hmm. aging because aging, let's face it, I'm aging, you're aging, we're all aging. It can be not fun sometimes. Sometimes your back hurts, sometimes you've got challenges, but technology, as Kim said, really helps bridge the gap. I think it does considerably because times have changed. When my sister and I first talked to my dad about moving my mom and my dad into independent living out of the house that they lived in, that seven years ago, we started talking to him about it. My dad was very welcome to it and very happy about it. But in his mind, he was picturing a nursing home mm -hmm. like my grandfather mm -hmm. lived in back in the 80s, his last couple of years of life, which isn't a fun scenario to, to think about if you're in your 70s or 80s. But then he realized that, you know, times have changed since even the 80s to where, you know, they have independent living, they have assisted living, they have memory care that are really nice places. You're, you're well kept, you're, you're, you're taken care of very, very well. And because of that, it, it's a different attitude environment for our aging parents to, to understand. I, I think we have to realize, you know, the way they grew up. Yeah, when, when we had my mom and dad, when we said, you know, dad, you're really going to need to sell the house. You don't need it anymore. It's just a, a burden to you. You're going once a week over there to, to check on it. And mm -hmm. you got to hire somebody to mow the yard and stuff like that. It's like, there's no reason to do that anymore. And he did sell the house. And afterwards, he talked to me and said, you know what? I just don't like this because I don't own anything anymore. Mm -hmm. I said, well, but dad, you have the money in the bank. I said, I, he said, I know, but son, I, I don't own anything anymore. And we have to realize, again, people who grew up in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, it meant something mm -hmm. to own something. And so, you know, there's there's a lot of way America society has changed mm -hmm. through those times from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, on and on and on, even since the 80s with the, the nursing home situation. So we have to, I think, give our, our aging parents a little bit of grace about that because times have changed. And, and I think yeah. that also the environments have changed. You know, my mom was living by herself in a house 
<clears throat> and wasn't able to drive anymore. So the idea of moving her into an independent living actually has allowed her to have lots of interaction, lots of activities that she wouldn't be able to do as easily if she was living at home in her house by herself. Yeah, it, look, I, I'm the first one to say I would love someone to take care of me. I would, my feet are bothering me right now, shoulders. Uh, my wife wants nothing to do with that. So I would love someone to do all that and feed me. But in, in all seriousness, uh, you guys bring up some really important points. Uh, this is, you know, obviously we don't have 30, you know, uh, 30 minutes does not do this topic justice. But let's talk about broaching those types of conversations because you both brought it up in talking to your mom and dad. This is not an easy conversation to have because, uh, you know, if I were in their shoes, my parents' shoes, I feel like something was being taken away. My independence mm-hmm. would be taken away. Uh, yeah. Kim, we'll start with you. How, how do you have that? If you're coaching somebody up and someone's watching this program, they've got an aging parent, um, still competent, can do everything. How do you start bridging the gap and having that type of conversation? I think having those conversations before it really is even an issue is super important because that way you kind of know a little bit about what their desires might be, what they might be open to. I do know that when we brought up the subject with my mom a few years ago, she did not respond super, you know, as positively as we would have liked and said, oh no, I'm not leaving my house. Uh, so we thought, oh, this is gonna be challenging. But, so, but I think that over time, it, she, she warmed up to the idea. But interestingly, I think it's, you have to know your parent and what sort of drives them. With my mom, it ended up being that when her brother came in town, and suggested they go look at a couple of places after she wasn't able to drive anymore. She was more open to it when he suggested it than when I did or my brother did. And so again, it's sort of knowing their personality. And I think also we were we were able to appeal to my mom about the fact of that water leak that you just had and you had to worry about the getting the repair people out and taking care of it. And you're having to cook for yourself and you're not eating as healthy as you as you should be because you're having to do it yourself and you're just having yogurt for lunch. That's probably not a great idea every single day. And so I think it was appealing to my mom in that situation of the things that she would get rather than the things that she would lose was very effective. But you have to know your parents' personality yeah. and what will kind of drive them. And I think that you know when you have another, when there's another, when there's a spouse or a partner involved, that also can be a different conversation. I think that's what happened with your, you know, with your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the other thing that you have to understand is that we all have different family dynamics. So you have to keep that in mind because the conversation that I had with my dad was different than the one mm-hmm. that Kim had with her mom. It's different than the one you would have with your parents because we're, we all have different personalities. We all have different relationships with our parents and all of our parents have different soci- social and economic uh, situations. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as far as money, as far as where they want to live, as far as what they can afford, everything it all piles up. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's at a different level and everyone's in a different space. Mm -hmm. So that's the one thing that makes it tough about this situation is there's no blueprint about Mm -hmm. here's how you do it Mm -hmm. because everyone is so different and that makes it so, so tough. But I think with your dad, you were able to say, this will be better for mom. mom. Yeah, And that made him more, more open to the idea. But Because my my dad is, my dad is very thrifty. I'll say that in a nice way. In other words, he doesn't like to spend his <laughs> I money. I like that. Frugality yeah. is, is top yes, of mind yes. for me. But, no, anyway, but, but, but mom, because of that, you know, when he looked at it's going to cost how much to live in this independent living? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, it's going to be better for you and for mom. Well, because her Alzheimer's was progressing. Yeah, but, and so it really was going to be. Yeah. It, and it and the same thing tough. with selling the house. The same thing with moving her to memory care, which, which we did a couple of years ago. The, all these things. And again, it goes to my dad's personality that he's very loving and caring. And he's been married to my mom for 62 years and he'll do anything for her. And that's why he wants to do it. Other people aren't quite the same. So it, you have to look at their personality, look at your family dynamics and figure it out from there. Yeah. Well, guys, I need to take a very quick break. This is an amazing conversation. And again, we're not doing it enough justice. We come back, we'll talk more about parenting, aging parents. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, 
the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. I was out of work for about a month. I wasn't there to help my husband. He had to take time off work. I have health insurance, but it doesn't cover everything. The Aflac policy helped me while I was out of work simply because it took the stress and the worry off. Aflac helped with copays, deductibles, and a lot of the upfront expenses. The Aflac insurance helped relieve my family's financial stress. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers. This free book reveals little known secrets about annuity strategies that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Call 800-504-8194. Kim, Mike, interesting conversation. Thanks so much for staying with us this morning. You bet. All right. Uh, what, one thing I wanted to talk about, one issue I wanted to talk about, I think it's key. We talked about kind of moving out of the home and into maybe something smaller, downsizing, and how that'll be more convenient. Let's talk about the car uh, or the vehicle. <laughs> maybe it's a motorcycle. I don't, you know, I haven't seen too many 77-year-olds <laughs> on a motorcycle, but I guess it's possible. I'm how sure there are, that yeah. What's that? I'm sure there are yeah. 77 year olds, I'm sure there, I'm but sure not there very are. many and, of them. Yeah. And, and look, Uber, Lyft, there are lots of ways. Going back to our carriage discussion, you don't need to have your own carriage and your own horse. Now you can go virtually anywhere. And I got to tell you, I would like when someone else uh, would drive me. Uh, now, you know, we have to factor in expenses. But Kim, how do you have that conversation about maybe giving up the car or the motorcycle or the scooter? It is hard. It is hard because I think even I think our generation and especially our children love the idea of having somebody else drive them or, uh, you know, being able to get work done while they're on the, you know, on their way to the office. And so they like the, the, the Lyft, the Uber idea because it makes it super convenient. I think for our parents, though, that's not something that they grew up with or that is it, it just seems um, it, it seems like you're taking something away for my mom, again, appealing to her. uh the ability to not have to pay uh, car insurance anymore, not having to worry about upkeep or gas or things like that. That was sort of one approach that we took. The other was part of the reason why she stopped driving was she had had this major eye surgery. So she had this patch and so she really shouldn't have been driving for a while. And after that, the patch came off, we were able to sort of, the, the doctor kind of played the, the bad guy for a while where the doctor just <laughs> said, I don't think it's, I don't think it's smart. So that is certainly one approach that people take is, See if you can get the doctor involved. And if they agree, you, know, you can kind of blame it on them, if, if you will. Um, and that can be one way as well. But I also appeal to, the, to my mom about the fact that I know that you would feel awful if you hurt somebody else. Mm -hmm. And for her, I think that was also that emotional um, concern was enough to help her finally decide, yes, let's go ahead and and, and, and sell the car. Now we did, the car was in the, in the garage for a while before we actually sold it. Cause it just, we kind of took baby steps. So you just have to kind of figure out what's going to work best with that for them. And with mom, we did, I did you know, give her my old iPhone and I put the, the, the rideshare app on there and taught her how to do that. And that was, we were able to do that pretty, pretty effectively for a little while um, until 
um, just some short-term memory makes it not really possible. And I just don't, we don't want her doing that anymore, but, but it, you know, I think she only, you know, accidentally called Uber, you know, Lyft once or twice. <laughs> once they or showed twice. up in the driveway and she's like, I don't know why they're here, but, um, uh, I guess so it, that could happen. But yeah, I was but gonna, I think, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I would say, yeah. So that happened a couple of times. They, um, but I think that that, that gave her a little bit of that freedom that you can, yes, you can still go play bridge. You can still go get your hair done. You can still do those other things, but it's also having to help them see the mindset of you're paying for those rides one at a time versus when you have a car, you don't think about necessarily the gas and the insurance and all of those other costs. So that was something that we had to kind of approach a little bit because mom was like, well, it cost me $13 to go to, to go play bridge. And I said, well, that's kind of like when you have a, a child and you hire, you know, and you get a babysitter, mm -hmm. it just costs, it, it's part of the enjoyment or part of the entertainment. So you just, again, you have to figure out what works with your parents. You, you have to figure out their personality. It goes back to the, mm -hmm. the personality situation. And I love my dad. We have a great, great, great relationship. We're really good friends along with just being father and son, but he admits it's not just me saying it. He admits he's very selfish and very stubborn. And I say you've earned that after being around for 84 years and, and being such a great man all this time. But it, last year he was in the hospital for three days because of COVID. He was in the hospital a day because he needed to get a pacemaker about six months after that. Anyway, during that time when he got out both times, it's a case of dad, you got to take it easy. You're not supposed to drive. Oh, I know the doctor said not to drive. Okay, good, good. You, you take it easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you need anything, let us know or let my sister know. Okay. Okay. I call him back later. Dad, what are you doing? Well, I just got back from, from the post office, the post office. What are you doing? Well, I was expecting a check down at the post office. So I went down there, dad, you're driving. You're not supposed to drive. Well, well I know, I know, but it, it wasn't very yeah. far. So, oh, dad, really? Yeah. I mean yeah, it is that loss of independence. And I, look, I remember my, as you guys are talking, I'm talking, thinking about my grandfather mm -hmm. 20 years ago, 30 years ago. He used to take the car, the auto train. He had to have his car to visit my uncle and aunt in Florida. Mm -hmm. Boarding that, you know, he took the Chevy Malibu, his second one, and put it on the auto train. You know, I think technology, as we go back to our previous uh, segment, technology really has afforded us opportunity. And and Kim, some of these community centers that people are moving into, they're very different. They have movie theaters, they oh. have uh, bridge rooms, they have pool tables, they have things, but they also have shuttles that can mm. take you to yes. a doctor appointment. Yes. They could take you to the mall and they run more than just once. So you can go on your schedule Yes. Do you still keep some of that independence? Yeah, absolutely. The, the place where my mom lives, they go to the grocery store once a week, you know, at a certain time so that everybody can kind of go. They do outings to museums and to movies and, you know, all kinds of different things. But I th so having that transportation, I think, does, again, allow somebody else to to take to take care of that part. And I also think that sometimes appealing to mom, you've earned that you've earned the right that you don't have to drive anymore. You can let somebody else drive you. So I try to, again, also appeal to the fact of, you know, just let them handle it. That's that way you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, again, you just have to kind of figure out what works for them. But I think that, you know, you don't have to, you know, when we ended up having to take the finances away from her because of some, um, political donations and you know just different donations because of all those scams. scams and those crazy people who call you and try to give you you know get you to give money over the phone but i think what i try to appeal to that like mom you know what that's just one less thing for you to have to worry about we're taking care of it we'll make sure the bills are paid you don't have to worry and i think the same can be true with driving too you don't have to worry about um, all of that. You just get to sit and enjoy. Yeah. I, I have yeah. to throw in though, the technology doesn't just help our parents. It helps us too. Mm -hmm. Because one yep. thing that we've, we've, we've noticed in the two years that we've been doing, almost two years that we've been doing parenting aging parents is that people don't talk about it. It's mm -hmm. not something where you go up to your friend and, or go to your coworker and say, yeah, mom has incontinence. How are you doing? Mm -hmm. you, you just don't want to be Debbie Downer. You don't want to, to bring everybody down and, and talk about the, the depressing things. But in, in our Parenting Aging Parents Facebook group, people can get on there and ask any type of question and they get such great support from each other. And and, yeah, and, and and you you didn't have that in the old days because we didn't have social media back back in the day. But but having social media, yes, there are some good things about social media, and I think that's one of them. The <laughs> fact that you can get that community support mm -hmm. through that type of uh, service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to ask you guys about uh, frugality and and uh, you know the fear. A lot of people have fear of running out of money in retirement. And and Kim, I think you mentioned, quote unquote, taking away. The finances, maybe that was uh, repurposing the finances to somebody else or reallocating the finances to somebody else in terms of a task. Uh, is there a fear 
that many have retirees have when they're thinking about downsizing and making these changes of running, running out of money. And how do you mitigate some of that if you haven't saved enough or you have doubts about Social Security or your defined benefit plan or your 401k if they're fortunate mm -hmm. to have a 401k and a DB plan too? It's, I mean, I think it's a huge issue and I think it's going to continue to get worse as we have people who live longer. Uh, I think that it's, you know, wherever you are right now, look at it and figure out, you know, what is your plan? Uh, we see so many sad situations from people whose parents didn't either had a, a financial, you know, um, catastrophe and wasn't, you know, they were maybe on track and then something happened, it, you know, that took them off. Um, but others that, that just didn't necessarily think that they would live this long. And so they are in a situation where they've run out of money mm -hmm. and they're really in challenging situations. And a lot of times that means, you know, while some families choose to, you know, there's lots of families that of course ask their, you know, want their parents to live with them and, and have that opportunity. But there's, there's some situations where in many ways, that's the only option because there there aren't the finances to do to do other things. So I think that it's looking at it, being realistic, and trying to figure out what are our options depending on what our age is, so that we don't. Because yeah, I think it's a huge fear that I think your your well, dad talks about it all the time. I'm yeah, well, well, it, it goes it goes back to to the the era that our parents grew up in. My my dad writes two checks on the first of every month, one for where he lives, mm -hmm. and we had to move my mom to memory care because of her Alzheimer's a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago. And it's a lot of money. He writes those two checks every every month. And he calls me after he writes them every time and says, son, I can't believe I, the amount of money I'm paying for this. And I said, well, dad, luckily you can afford it. But he says, this is more I'm paying in one month than I made the whole year back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. And and you again, you got to think about their mind frames. Like, wow, this is a lot of money. Even though he can afford it, it seems like a lot of money. And it's very scary mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and by the way, those costs are only only going up we've got to figure out how to deal with that yeah. sure great conversation guys kim mike great to see you thanks so much for sharing your perspective and your experiences i know i learned a lot i think the audience is as well we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon we thanks would love you. that thanks that wraps up this episode of brn am have a topic of interest someone you think we should talk to drop us a line and don't forget for all the latest security news and lifestyle wellness finance tech entertainment so much more all in one place check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Well, visit our website. And of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN AM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.